Hello and welcome to uh, Zobrio University's uh, presentation on the W2 and 1099 year-end processing webinar for the Abila uh, MIP fund accounting software. My name is Richard Prisma. I'm a senior application consultant here at Zobrio. Uh, and what we wanted to do today was just to kind of take an overview of the W2 and the 1099 process uh, as it takes place in MIP fund accounting. So some of you may have um, maybe brand new to this process. So this is a, a, a good webinar to show you how to get started um, in this process. So some of you have, may have done this before, maybe several times, and this will just act as a reminder or a refresher on uh, what to do and how to get started. Um, on W-2 and 1099 processes. So we're gonna kind of take a look at the, uh, what we have to do in, in MIP fund accounting to prepare ourselves for um, producing these forms. And um, at the end, we'll invite you to, uh, to, to view um, future webinars on some topics that might be uh, of interest to you too. Okay. So the, you know the, the, the nice thing in MIP fund accounting, uh, actually there's there are several nice things. It's one is that there's no need to purchase any pre-printed W-2 forms um, for for uh, filing. Uh, the actually the only one that you do have to uh, that you do have to um, purchase a pre-printed form is the federal copy, because that federal copy has uh, red ink on it and um, MIP doesn't print out those forms in red ink. So the federal copies of the W-2s and 1099s, you will have to uh, purchase the pre-printed copy, but everything else uh, can just be printed on four-part uh, blank stock that uh, has the instructions on the back, and those should be available at any Staples or Office Depot now. Secondly, you can file the federal forms uh, for the W-2s for free. Um, the software uh, has the ability to, to file electronically the, the federal form, and it will do that for free. There is a charge. Uh, there is an option to, to have uh, the software do the mailings for you. I believe that minimum charge is $24.95, and I don't think it has changed in years. So there's a, there's a price per uh, employee um, and a price per vendor on the 1099 side um, to, uh, to do the filing for, to do the mailings for you, but the electronic filing is all done for free. And, and you'll see here uh, in just a little bit that there's an easy to manage uh, employee information display. When you're processing your W-2s, uh, your employees will appear in a grid, uh, much like Excel, uh, that you can uh, so that you can review the data and make any last-minute changes if you have to. And then also, there's the ability to reprint W-2s or submit revisions, corrections uh, to those W-2s. The the software remembers the last things that you did. Uh, in, in the W-2 processing, and uh, so you can always go away and come back later and pick up right where you left off. Okay, okay so first I'm going to uh, just go through the W-2 processing, uh, and then we'll talk about the 1099 processing, uh, but together they are very, very similar processes. Um, I'm just going to take, uh, take these one at a time because some of you may be involved on the payroll side and some of you may be involved just strictly on the accounts payable side, but you'll notice that the steps are very, very similar. All right, so when you, to begin the process, um, you'll go to, uh, you'll log into your MIP fund accounting and go on up to activities and then slide down to, uh, uh, excuse me, in, uh, excuse me, in payroll, you'll go into uh, MIP payroll, go up to activities, and then slide on down to tax reporting and open up the, uh, and you may see the, you may see the name, the word Atrix, 
um, somewhere in the software. Atrix is uh, just simply the name of the third party uh, that uh, Abila had partnered with years ago and has embedded their software in MIP fund accounting to do the processing. So you may see the word Atrix, but it's all, it's all bundled within uh, the uh, Abila fund accounting. But when you get to the, uh, the, the first page, you'll see a form update uh, button in the upper right-hand corner. And if that button is active, if it is not grayed out, go ahead and click on it. Because that, that will, uh, the, the, the software will go out to the Atrix website and pull in the updated 2014 forms for you. If you run it without updating, then your forms may very well say 2013. And those will be incorrect. Okay, So you'll want to select Form 2014 and come over here on the right-hand side and click on the Form Update button uh, to pull in those new forms. And any time that you come into this screen, if that button is, is active, go ahead and click it. That means that there are some updates that, uh, that have been made. They may or may not apply to your state. Usually I just go ahead and click on it anyway, even if it's for Puerto Rico or Guam. Um, I just go ahead and, and click on it and get the most up-to-date forms. Once you've updated your, your software for the new forms and you, you, you start this process, you'll see your employees listed here in a grid. And this is a good place to review the information, make sure that the addresses are correct, correctly spelled, and that the addresses are complete. And then you'll see uh, over on the right-hand side all their box totals. Now I usually make it a, a, a general rule not to make any updates here in this grid. And that's just a very simple reason is that uh, any changes that I make here do not backflow into my MIP fund accounting software. So if I make a change here, there is no record kept of the change that I made. There is no audit trail. So usually if I see any changes that have to be made here, I will close out of this process and I can always start all over again but I close out of this screen and go back into my software into the uh, employee record or go to employee adjust balances and um, and make my changes there you know the majority of the time that is spent in in processing w2s is doing all the work uh, in preparation for the actual processing so before I get before I get to this point here, and this is kind of why we're doing this, uh, you know, uh, this webinar a couple of months before the end of the year, because it's time to start thinking about uh, about processing and, and what uh, what information I need to uh, to review before January, before we actually do this in January. Uh, you know, there are reports that I would want to run out of out of MIP. Uh, there are certain reports that I can run now and then um, after the end of the year, after the last payroll of the year. You know, in order to, I would like to run those reports in order to balance back to my box totals here. Okay. So most of the work that I'm going to do in processing W-2s is going to be before I ever get to this point. All right, so once I've verified all the information in my grid, I come here to the, the option uh, screen where they give me the option to complete the W-2 e-filing service. And they list here everything that this e-filing service will do. It's going to print and mail all the employee copies. It's going to do all the, the, the federal filing, all the state filing for free, excuse me, for a, for a price. So over here on the right-hand side, it'll say, you know, it'll print and uh, mail the employee copies for $1.89 a piece. Right. Or it will e-file the employee copies for not just $0.99 cents a piece. So there's a, there's a cost, and the minimum cost is $24.95. Now, if I select other options down here at the bottom, 
all right? It'll say, I print my W-2s, e-file with the federal, uh, with the federal, e-file the state, print my federal W-2s and, and state W-2s. So all the printing is, can be done for free. E-filing the federal is free. E-filing the state, there's a small cost, 69 cents a piece. All right. Again, so I would say the, the vast majority of MIP users, payroll users, probably do all the printing and mailing themselves. So if you, if you are gonna do the mailings yourselves, the system will print out the W-2s and you, you can see them online first. So when you get to the printing stage, you can see your W-2s print out uh, online first, so you can see what it looks like, and you'll notice MIP is going to draw the boxes, all the lines, um, and everything. On It will print on the, uh, the blank forms. And if we have updated, uh, if we've updated our forms for the current year, it'll say 2014 down there at the bottom. Okay. All right, so it gives you the opportunity to view the W-2s on your computer screen first before committing them to paper. And like I say, it keeps track of all the steps that, that you've taken. So if you quit anywhere in, in the process, it'll remember where you were. So if you come back um, to complete the processing, you can, you can start where you left off. Okay, the other uh, actions on the right-hand side, you can correct uh, any completed W-2s and submit the corrections. Um, and you can e-file or print any W-2s that you didn't previously e-file or print. Okay. All right. And the 1099 processing is very, very similar. You know, there's a, a, a good bit of work to do before we get to the 1099 processing stage there are some reports out of accounts payable that i'd like to run you know a listing of the vendors a listing of any adjustments that those vendors uh that i entered for those vendors and uh, a look at the check register uh for and filter it on any uh the 1099 vendors to see how much i paid these guys this year okay so all the same advantages uh, that we saw for W-2s are the same for the 1099s. There's, I do not have to buy pre-printed 1099 forms like you have to out of some softwares. Okay. I can, I can e-file the federal form for free, the 1099 for free. And then I also have the option to mail my 1099s um, or to, to have the system mail my 1099s for a small charge, a minimum charge of 25 bucks. You're gonna see the same uh, grid like we did for W-2 uh, employees. You're gonna see the same grid, only it's gonna be holding vendor information. And then you'll, you'll see the miscellaneous 1099 box information. And you can make last minute changes on that grid, but just you know, be forewarned that none of those changes go uh, flow back to my vendor records. And of course I have the same abilities to reprint 1099s or submit revised 1099s. Okay. So the same thing here. Now, to get to this process, I'm, I'm actually logging into the accounting software and then I'm going up to activities, um, process the 1099s. And then, of course, I want to select the correct date on the left-hand side and then click on the form updates on the right-hand side. Anytime that button is active, I want to click on it. Okay. So there you are. So you see the same type of grid as my taxpayer ID numbers, the vendor name, vendor address, zip code, et cetera, all the demographic information. And then over on the right-hand side of the grid, I see my box numbers. Okay. And I can, now what I'm going to see here in this grid for 1099 vendors, I'm going to see every 
1099 vendor who was flagged as a 1099 vendor who had received any payments whatsoever, even the ones that are, are less than $600. All right, so I can take this grid here and I can sort my grid since the vast majority of my 1099, 1099 vendors are box seven. I can click on the title block box seven and I can sort it in dollar amount order. All right, and I can just go, go on down to the vendors who are less than $600 and I can just delete them off this grid. And the system won't, uh, won't process a 1099 for them. So there's, so I don't have to filter out the, the, the vendors prior to uh, getting to this point. I can just filter them out and delete them off of this grid when I get here. All right, once I have verified all the information, then I get, uh, I have my filing choices. I can use their complete 1099 e-filing service, which does all the printing and all the mailing for the recipient copies. It does all the fi filing with the federal copies and any applicable state copies. And it does that all for a charge. $1.89 a vendor. I don't think that that amount has changed much in the past few years. Or I can pick my the other options, which is I'll do all the mailing myself. Just e-file the federal, e-file the state if necessary. But I'll do all the printing and mailing myself. And I can do that for free. Of course, again, I'm going to look at and view my 1099s on the screen first before I commit it to paper. If anything here, if, if you get to this point and something doesn't look right, I can cancel out of this point and go back to, my, the, to that uh, vendor grid that I saw earlier. Okay. Okay. And again, it keep the, the system keeps track of my history, it tells me what I have completed and what I haven't completed. Okay. Now, just a few deadlines to keep, uh, to keep in mind. I know we're a couple of uh, months away from the end of the year, but January 31st, obviously, is the deadline for employers to mail out their W-2s to employees. Um, and for businesses to furnish the, uh, the 1099 statements. Uh, next year, March 2nd, March 2nd is the deadline for businesses to mail their Form 1099s with the IRS if filing on paper. If you're doing it electronically, then the deadline's April 1st. And May 31st, uh, excuse me, March 31st is the deadline for e-filing the W-2s and W-3s. Okay. Very good. So those are just the dates to keep in mind. Also, just a couple of additional dates uh, later on this month, uh, Thursday, November 20th, we're going to do a, another uh, similar type of webinar to discuss closing your books in MIP. Uh, I know a lot of folks who are way, way, way behind in closing their books uh, for their current fiscal year. Uh, I won't name names, but some are several years, <laughs> several years uh, behind. But uh, at nine o'clock on uh, Thursday, November 20th, I'm gonna hold a little webinar about uh, what to do, uh, what to run, the reports to run before you actually close your books uh, for the fiscal year in MIP fund accounting. And then the beginning of, uh, right after the holiday, uh, Thanksgiving holiday, the beginning of De December, John Quato will be holding a webinar on how to keep the IT infrastructure and networking um, updated, but within budget. Okay, so he'll be, uh, he'll be holding a webinar to discuss that. 
So I would say, you know, if, if you have any ideas for any other webinars that, that you'd like to see, uh, topics that you would like to see, please contact us. Uh, if you would like uh, any assistance in uh, producing your W-2s and 1099s uh, coming up in January, please let us know. You can contact Matthew Kreutzer. Here's his email address and his phone number is 732-4756, and that's a 314 area code. So just let us know if you need any assistance in uh, producing the 1099s and the W-2s and all the reporting and balancing that has to be done. Otherwise, look for additional webinars that are, that are coming up, and please join us if you find any of those webinars uh, to be interesting or helpful to you. Thanks very much for your time and we'll see you down the road.